And we're back, I guess. This time we're just doing the the final thoughts. It's actually been quite a bit of time <laughs> yeah. between the last video that we did and this one, just because we had some scheduling issues. About a month or so. Yeah. Of, look at the look at the freaking wow! That is some really really terrible circles. But anyway, all right. Thoughts about the game? Um, I hated it. I, I think that sort of goes without saying for everyone. And I'm pretty like sure we kind of e e e e look at those explosions. Look how real they are. Yeah, but you know, I, I think everyone's sort of on board with why. But I mean, you know, you just sort of reiterate it. it. Gameplay and mechanics and visuals are all fell well below the bar set by Frontline. And this game was made, I don't know, what two years maybe after. Yeah. You would think it would be at least. On par, no, but no, um, no, no. But no the on worst par. thing, the absolute worst thing, I think, and everyone who's ever played this game can agree, is the ending. The ending is crap. They leave it at just this open. What the hell? What? What did you do? I didn't do anything. What? Not what you, you did. About? Look what you did and got them done. Oh, I, I got damn it, game freak. It slightly pulled out the controller. You are gonna be the death of me. It didn't. Holy crap! Anyway. It, like as I was saying, the ending has got to be the most disappointing part of this game, and for obvious reasons, it it leaves it at such an obvious open end cliffhanger. You know, your brother gets taken away, and you're like, okay, well, in the next this game the we're going to save him. Well, there was no next game. There was going to be a, a follow up, a sequel to this game, but it never got made. Um, it, I believe one of the reasons was the rather poor reviews that came from the next ga game. No, it, it was this game and the next game. It was solely this game. Okay. That's what apparently the developer said. They said because this game was crap, <laughs> and and that that's that's annoying. I mean, you know, I can, I can understand. I guess it was crisscross. Anyway, <laughs> I can understand a a game developer wanting to leave an open end. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it cliffhangers are good if they're done properly, and I can even. While it's not excusing, I can understand the logic behind leaving an open end to try and ensure that there's a second game. Because then you can go to you know the producer and say, hey, look, you know, we, we left an open end. We got to make the game. But if you're going to do that, you need to make the game good, good enough to justify it. Because you can't, you at can't this just point, have one or the other. Yeah, because you know. It, it, you just took oh, we made such a, a loss. Yeah, it's like, we made a great game, but we didn't make a story that could go into another game. We resolved all the conflicts in the first game. And, and that, that, I think, is, a, is an art that has sort of been lost in video games today, because let's say from 2001 to now, how many really good one-shot games have there been? How many? Like, that from we would 2001 say, till from now. 2000, well, 2001, I'm just saying because of Halo. Halo sort of s set the generations apart. Yeah, but okay. you can't say that was a one-shot game either. Uh, no, I'm just saying that's uh, where that's, that's where, where the, it's going to the, begin. The, the, the new the new era of gaming. Yes. Right? But can you think of any games that have just no sequels, just ended strong, and that was it? And and were were, were great games. Um, I mean, j just the fact that I can't pull one out of my ass right now is a bad sign. I uh. Um. Um. Say none. I can't think of any. And I mean that—that's not to say that there aren't any good games, but it—the games just get beaten to hell. Halo was was a generation-defining game, right? And it went on and, and on, on and just progressively began to slip all the way to the third one. And the third one, at least for all its faults, was supposed to be the end-all, be-all. And it isn't. And that's sad, but at least Bungie got off the ship before it completely sank. Um, now it's all 343 Studios. Yeah. And that... When you're a development studio and you start making... your And your name is then based off of one of the characters in yeah, the, that it game series. One soul game. It's... it's mm, something's uh, not right. Other, other game. Mass Effect. Okay. Mass Effect... Mass Effect at least has been holding up. And, and well, Mass of course, Effect in and that, of itself... That's been, that's basically saying, okay, we're going to take the most epic story in history and then continue telling it in such a way that is 
it makes sense. It's, and that's understandable. And some games need a couple games to fully explain it, but then when you get to the end, it should be the end. Halo yeah. proves that. There, there's a definitive end to all stories. Yeah. And the thing is, there's nothing worse than dragging a story out longer than... Right. I, I have Mass Effect 3. I have not played it yet. Um, I have been playing Battlefield 3 multiplayer, but I haven't played the single player. I've... <sighs> I, I'm trying to think of a game other than Mass Effect that cons continually and consistently um, gives you Captain Dale Die was Gunny. Or... What? Die. I'm not familiar with him. Anyway. Regardless. Yeah. Mass Effect was the only game series that I can think of within recent times that consistently brings to the table a good story as well as good gameplay. Now, granted, between Mass Effect 1 and 2, it kind of slipped up from being more of an RPG sci-fi kind of thing to more of just kind of like a sci-fi shooter kind yeah, of thing. sci-fi action shooter. And then with Mass Effect 3, what I, from what I've been told, for, if you remember, I never played it, yeah. it, it seemed as though it brought back some of those RPG elements that made Mass Effect 1 very good. And to, but, sort, of, to but, sort of bring this around... There's always, just in, sort of as a counterpoint to this game, there's always a, there's always some sort of good quality, even to a bad, even to a bad game. Yeah. With this game, I couldn't find it. Well, uh, another bad game is the game that followed this. Um, European Assault. European Assault. It, the, yes, the graphics were better, but the gameplay was, worse. was, was just piss easy. The mechanics made it so that you were almost invincible. The storyline, you know, the storyline was was kind of crap. But you know, there, the, the soundtrack was good. I enjoyed the soundtrack. It was, it was a different switch up, so I'm not mm -hmm. playing the same game. And you know, it it threw in little elements here and there that at least made it playable. This game had nothing. Like that. I I found, and you mentioned the music. Now, from what I can gather, Medal of Honor. It, it, oh, okay, let me back up. Each game series had brings something that they're very good at. For example, Medal of Honor, as you've seen, has birds that peck at microphones in their bloopers. But aside from that, Medal of Honor the series is pretty well respected for their music, and I'm pretty sure that's all due to Michael Giacchino. Yeah, and he, his music is amazing. Call of Duty. When they brought in Hans Zimmer for Modern Warfare 2 soundtrack, that was amazing. But it didn't, it doesn't go from one game to the other. They have different people yeah. for different games. And with Call of Duty, it set the standard for pretty much first person shooters. Battlefield did the realistic shooter kind of thing, and they're pretty much the king of semi -real semi realism. As real as, as you would comfortably get before the game gets. Like you know, just too much. Though. It's like it goes then before it goes into the uncanny valley in terms of like oh, not even just uncanny valley, just annoying as hell. Because there's there's a point where video you have to realize it's a video game, okay, and not all right. of us are going to be you know military trained guys, right? But they've you know they've done that, and you know as with most of the games, it sort of ends with this, and I can understand you know putting this as as a tribute to all those men. But I can't help it in the back of my mind thinking that they deserved a little better. Yeah. It is all. They, they deserved a little bit better than this. And it's disappointing that this is the only Medal of Honor from the Pacific Theater. And, well, and there's another one. Well, Medal of Honor Pacific. Pacific. Uh, that's for PC. That didn't, that didn't Either make it way. to console. Which it's is still a Medal of Honor game. But in, in the end, I, I just... I. I I can't, I can't find a redeeming quality to this game right. that would make me want to pick it up again. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's pretty hard to do because I picked up games just because I've liked one gun in them or yeah. I liked the song in that one level. But to have no redeeming qualities is very rare. Is rare. And good that's, job. You get the rare. You get the rare honor of not having any redeeming qualities. And so, uh, you know, even the Civil War game was campy. It was so bad, it was good. It was fun to laugh at. This, this one, one was, was just bad annoyingly bad. Yeah, it, there, and, and as Twilight Fox said, there's a good, there's a bad good, and there's a bad bad. Yeah. And this was bad bad. 
So, I mean, I would not recommend this game to anyone unless you enjoy playing terrible games, you know. Or you have a sick will to live. Yeah. Or or you want to, you know, lose all respect for first-person shooters. I played Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Ooh, well, (laughs) we got a badass over here. (laughs) All right, well, we will see you guys next time. This is Twilight Fox 109. Game Free 5 to 6-4. Signing out.